Hey folks, host on Touche Tonway, your resident prop culture icon here with Grant Cole. I'm the rugby evangelist for this is Texas Rugby. And welcome to the Propcast. We have done one of these in a while, but we're glad to be back. Plenty to talk about. A lot of great things going on in the in the rugby community, both globally and domestically here in the U.S. But first, I um, wanted to shout out to um, an icon in her own right, um, Jillian Potter. We have some. There's been some fundraiser work going on on, on her behalf on Ruck Cancer, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Uh, but she's fighting it, and she's winning, and, we, and we're out here to help her win. Um, so I'll take that away, um, Grant. So one of the things that uh, Jillian's coming through, she's in uh, what we think is her last round, of what we hope is her last round of chemo right now. Mm-hmm. Come on, Ruck Cancer. That's and uh, and one, of the, one of the great things about this is uh, – Natalie Marquino. And, and man, if you don't know Natalie Marquino, this is a wonderful spirit of a lady. She the is. Swiss beats herself. The Swiss beats, the original Swiss beats herself. Facts, facts, facts. And, and, uh, and, and Natalie Marquino has set up some auctions on 32auctions.com that have some great jerseys that have been donated to, to Jillian's cause that are being auctioned off so that they can raise money to help Jillian offset the cost of the cancer treatments that she's getting. And and Natalie has done some really great work. She's gone around, talked to a lot of these ladies in the world rugby community, and they have generously donated their jerseys. They've got some great sets of uh, shoulder pads as well. Mm-hmm. And, and also there's some other jerseys in there. And, and just folks, if you don't uh, know where to go, look at this is texas rugby we've got some links on there uh natalie's page natalie barquino if you don't know how to spell that that's n-a-t-h-a-l-i-e-m-a-r-c-h-i-n-o natalie marquino she's got some pages on 32 auctions.com and then you can also if you if you don't want to auction off you just want to give a few bucks you can go to the youcaring.com page and look up jillian potter and uh, you carry, she's got a you carrying page there. Their goal is forty five thousand dollars. They're at thirty nine thousand three hundred and thirty right now, as of tonight, as we're talking. Uh, they can always use a little bit of help there to get to their goal. Uh, we really, we really ask that you help. Uh, we help out by looking at the auction. It's a silent auction. You put in your bid at the end of the auction. Natalie uh, calls you up, says, "Hey, you put in the highest bid." You're willing to write the check, you write the check or send it into PayPal or whatever it is you guys, uh, you and Natalie uh, agree on, and you get the uh, jersey sent into you. There's even a jersey signed by Jillian herself. Absolutely. Now, that, 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 that to me, that's a big, that's a big win right there. I tell you, that's, that's a huge thing. And you know what? I, um, in my person, in my you know, professional life, before um, I became a management consultant, I actually was in cl- cancer research and clinical research. Um, oh, really? I worked in the lab. B cell. Well, your pharma. dad's a your dad's a doctor too, right? Yep, my father's a physician. Yep, um, family practitioner. Also, my sister. Um, and these things are I I understand like this when we talk about the issue of cancer. Talk, I understand it in um, all three dimensions. Um, I worked on the research end on a variety of therapies, most, um, for those who aren't familiar, biologics, um, monoclonal antibodies, um, testing. I did a lot of cell work. And I know that it's a fight that we're going to be fighting a long time. There's some people that are they're definitely fighting and winning, but we have to keep the fight up, and they need our support here. Um, this is not a, it's not a cheap fight. We need to give them, help them out, get the resources they, resources they need to get through um, and we're the community and the community can rally around folks to do that. And what I'm more than willing to do, um, is actually, um, auction also, also somebody who wants their own viral rugby video, I'm willing to auction my services. Um, song of choice, you know, five minutes, cool. Five minutes or less, five minute video or less, your team, your club, whatever you want to see, um, hit me up, uh, I am happy to auction that off. Let me know once to the top to the top to the highest bidder, which club wants it, and you will have you know my you know my quality. You know what I do, so that's going to go out to everybody, and that's for you, Jillian, because you made a few highlights yourself. So let's make let's see if we can get that out there for Jillian. Um, she served this country fantastically, represented us here you know, as somebody that 
I, I enjoyed watching and played in the prop cast way. Um, she could be a prop culture icon that Seven's prop, and you know how that goes. And we're happy to do that on, on your behalf. So, hey, anybody get up. Natalie, hit me up. How do I get that on there? How we do this? Um, you guys are collecting the money. All right, let's auction that off. If we can get that on there, I'm happy to do it. Well, we will definitely get you hooked up with Natalie after the prop cast tonight. Uh, and, and make sure that you get that put on to 32auctions.com with Natalie. I think there are a lot of teams that could benefit from your services and would like to uh, au auction to bid on that and, and try and get your services in, in there uh, to sign. So it's a very uh, wonderful offer that you put in. If you guys haven't seen Tosan, what he can do editing wise and some of the great things, you got to go to Viral Rugby. You got to look up at what he does, man. He's put on some great hot videos. Well, speaking of hype videos and hype stuff, mm -hmm. recent the last few days, we've seen some uh, hype stuff in the social media world around mm -hmm. rugby, haven't we? Uh, a lot of on. energy. A lot of energy. Some good, some energy. bad. Yeah, some good, some uh, not so favorable. Fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so... The next thing we want to talk about is uh, is really social media responsibility, right? Yeah. So, and a lot of that is around really, we talk about don't hit sin yet, but that's really <laughs> not all of what it's about, right? Right, 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 definitely. It, it, it's more about just, you know, being socially responsible with what you're posting. And, right. and you know, and so... I ran into some of this mistake this this last two weeks. Okay, mm -hmm. personally, this was I I actually had a, a problem with this where I posted some stuff that I thought was okay, but I didn't think through. I just didn't think out through the various steps where this stuff could be taken, mm -hmm. and, and think how it would how it would affect other people that may have been involved or, or were involved in the situation that I was posting, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and because I didn't think through all of these steps, uh, I was potentially uh, not really hurting their reputation, but potentially opening them up to attacks from people who eh, maybe they weren't as, uh, as well-intentioned as we were. Right. And one of the things that's really interesting about this is rugby is moving from this place where we are, we've been amateur hobbyists for so long. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting to this era where we're not amateur hobbyists anymore. Correct. We're, ex we're expected to be professionals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so how do, I mean, we're not always making this transition in the most comfortable way possible. So how do we make this in a socially responsible manner? Well, especially, especially with the advent of social media where, hey, it's on the internet, so it's permanent. You know, you can delete it, but somebody probably screenshot it, right? Well, sure. I mean, the internet's forever. Um, and that's something that people need to get through their, their minds. Um, the idea of privacy controls and things like that only shields you so far, but also... The other end of it, there's, okay, what not to do on social media is one thing, but what to do is another. Because um, it's just as much as a valuable tool as it is something that can be a liability if not used correctly. Um, I guess for me, um, one thing that I, I think that's very important for people to understand, I talk, I talk very, uh, very explicitly about the idea of social media governance and self, social media policy. Um, when you're a part of an organization, how do you make sure the members of your organization that represent your organization are using this as an asset, not as a liability? And That's if it's a good. liability, what do we do? Um, if there's a, a possibility of something that could be a liability, how do we react? How do we respond rapidly, decisively, transparently, and also as it's a jumping point moving forward, right? So when we talk about that, it's... Very, very important to understand what happens, like what you were talking about in your situation. How do we take account accountability for a gaffe? What, how do we take accountability for, and let's be very explicit, we're talking about sexism in some cases, right? In so, some cases, yes. Not in mine, but, but not yeah, in yours. talking about it, yes. And the idea of being socially responsible, that is a part of our current social climate. 
Um, one of the favorite things that I that I remember about many great organizations is about the ability to adapt and adaptation before you have to. Mm-hmm. So you, it's very important that we understand what social climate that we're in, agree, disagree, or whatever. You need to grow your brand. You need to take your ego out the way and protect your brand. And, and it, what what did you say right there? Take adapt. your ego out of the way. Yep. And, and that's what I had to do. Mm-hmm. I had to take my ego out of the way. I, you know, and I didn't even realize that perhaps my ego was in the way. And as amateur hobbyists, one of the things we don't realize is that our ego is often way, way too often. It's it's what is in the way and mm-hmm. is causing us to be unprofessional. Well, and, and, and in fairness, I think the, that comes from a place where when we're acting as amateur hobbyists, we're trying to move from amateur hobbyists to the professional era, right? Just like the play right. has moved, right? right There's right. always going to be a lag behind that. that. Because when we're amateur hobbyists, we put ourselves into things. So our ego is already in it. We bake the cake. You know, we want people to like it. We want people to be into it. We take the critique about it personally because it's a personal venture for us. Once it becomes professional, it's a product. And it's something that you've made, and it's for people to consume and see as they see fit. They're going to critique it, like it, love it, whatever, right? So now, when you take your ego out of it, and you that those, those opportunities for feedback become product development. They okay. there are areas where you can say, okay, you know what, we didn't get that right, but we can get this right in the future. Get the feedback from the folks, the people that care, the stakeholders of your brand, the stakeholders of your product, stakeholders of your organization. Um, if you feel that if they, if they feel aggrieved, they're aggrieved. They're, the, they're your customers. These are the yeah. people that are writing checks. These are the people that are showing up to events. You are asking for their money. You're asking for their patronage and their representation of your and, of your organization. And you know what you just said right there is everything that the major league rugby owners and coaches are saying to their co- their players right now as they're teaching them about social media responsibility. Excellent. And I, I would love to, I would love to hear, um, and maybe this is something we can talk about in the future. I, this could be something useful going forward for clubs, for organ. Like I said, this is going to be an asset, right, for everybody. Right. Um, not everybody has social media management support. Um, I'm I'm happy to offer my services to any club, professionally or non-professional, to if you want to see how to leverage social media as a tool responsibly, but also profitably, because that's yes. what this has to be. Um, and it has to happen at some point, right? Right. Because uh, are, are we just going to let our members represent themselves mm-hmm. as, as as individuals, or at some point do they have to take responsibility as club members? At some point exactly. do they have to take res- responsibility? At some point do we have to take responsibility, you and I, even though we're mm-hmm. pundits, do we have to take responsibility as USA rugby members? As Absolutely. an Atomic Rugby Union member, as a Texas Rugby Union member, as mm-hmm. a you know, as a as a U.S. as a former Marine Corps mem- rugby member, as a former A and M rugby member, what kind mm-hmm. of responsibility do we have to take? Are we representing that? And exactly, and that the, you asked the right question because it's about looking in the mirror. Like at certain points, did I did what is something that I said? Am I willing to stand behind that as representing those? Not just what I'm representing currently, but where I've been before. Exactly. Um, And that's very, very important. I've been very conscious of this just because I've coached women for so long. I've coached about a better better part, about 800 women. You and Uh, me, well, I've not coached that many, but I understand where I've been. I've coached them before, so I I do understand what you're saying. Right, and it's it's important. People kind of say that, okay, they kind of, uh, you know, they kind of, um, they kind of decry the idea of being PC and 2PC, this type of thing. I don't view it as that in the sense that it's a hypersensitivity issue. It's a, it's a situation where we need to be adapting to people that we want to patronize us, that we want to be them to be a part of our organizations, be stakeholders involved, engaged. That, that That's what makes this brand valuable, not just our different clubs. Of course, yeah, there are individual clubs or ventures and things like that, our, our thing, the prop cast here. We want people to feel like this is something that they have a stake in and they won't tune out and then go away because they don't feel like they're not they're not represented and thought of uh, thought of and valued in a particular yes. way. Uh, so that's something that's very, very important. There's nothing political about that. It's understanding what the customer wants. Yeah. And it, let's talk business, important. you know. And now social media, people have to be very, very honest about this. The overwhelming majority of new people that are coming to this sport will encounter it through social media, period. Period. End of story. 
And, the, and it's going to be in little bitty sound bites, and we're going to yep. have to present it to them in that way and in a way that's digestible and a manner that they understand and will love. Exactly. And if it's not in a way that they will love, they're not going to digest it. They'll move on to the next thing, and they'll move on so quick that they'll forget about who we were. Exactly. So one thing I wanted to point out that's important, when you do, when you do misstep, Take accountability for that misstep. Apologize. Also, publicly, transparently, but also if there's an individual involved, reach out to that individual um, and directly. That's, that's important. That is very important. I Absolutely. did that this week. Mm -hmm. I actually reached out to every individual involved. Mm -hmm. Apologize. I, you know, my my actual uh, post in, that was involved in this situation was just my, my opinion, mm -hmm. but it was attached to a picture that had other people involved. And mm -hmm. so I had to reach out to other individuals involved in the picture and say, hey, I apologize for this. Didn't mean to get you wrapped up into this, you right. know, yada, yada. This is my opinion. I've re, I've, I've edited this. I've changed the privacy version uh, on this post so that it's just me and y'all at the moment. Nobody else can see it, but us and, and you guys that are tagged in it. After this blows over, I'll change the t privacy back to public again but I've already edited it and it'll be, you know, edited to something else. And, and, and it's just, you know, that's just a personal preference. And one, one thing that I do that I learned a lesson and shout out to, um, not shout out to Na Naima from um, San Fran. We, uh, uh, one of our first discussions was around something like this. I actually reposted something with her in it, but I didn't talk to her first. Ah, Naima and is a good person to listen yeah. to because she's got a lot of wisdom. She's been through a yeah. lot of fire, man. Yeah. It's, you know, and, very, very thankful. Thank you. Thank you for being nice, for being real direct. This is a long time you made. I remember it. Uh, but I did something that changed how I operated because it made me sense. It's easy to think, OK, because it's happening in the social media space. Everything's free for all. Some people still operate like that. I don't. Um, I make sure it involves somebody who's identifiable or something like that. I try to reach out to them first if it's something that they're not like sharing publicly already. Um, that's very important because some people want to make sure that they maintain control over their image out in space. And that's what social media management is actually really about. Um, so, so social media responsibility, big issue going forward. We've really got to concentrate on it. We've really got to make sure we are representing all of our brands, absolutely. not just our personal one, mm -hmm. not just our ego, but all of the brands we represent, right? Exactly. And to, the, to their benefit. And to their benefit. We're right. always going to be asking, hey, is what I'm putting down out here, was what I'm putting forward to the benefit of everybody that's involved? Exactly. So that tell us, on, moving on from social media responsibility, you have some questions for me about something. So, yeah. So now MLR is really ramping up. MLR is ramping up. I'm, I'm they've excited. They've got a season coming up. I'm excited. They've, they've announced the schedule. Yep. They got the, the schedule. The exhibition schedule's out. Well, and, and their season schedule is out. Oh, I was unaware. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Folks yeah, at home, yeah, we be looking out season, for that. Okay, their season schedule is out starting on April 21st, and they've got matches scheduled, so you can go to the MLR website and, and find that out. So, yeah, so that's out, uh, and and uh, there's going to be 10 matches on CBS Sports Network. Big news. Big news. Uh, so that's that's a huge thing. Uh, there's a lot more news to come. I, I don't, <laughs> some of it, I wish I could talk about, uh, not yet, not <laughs> yet. Keep it, keep it uh, on the yeah, rack. I, know, I, know. Know. I, I really wish I could talk about it. It's some, uh, it, it's really kind of exciting. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but it, it's, it's some good stuff. Uh, you know, we talked watching the Sabercats. Uh, I gotta say, I, so yesterday, Mm -hmm. The Sabercats allow me to ride on their bus with them to Austin and back. Okay. Uh, and and uh, so I got the itinerary from Coach Fitzy on Wednesday. He, he messaged it to me. Very professional itinerary. Had all the times with it. When we're going to meet here. When we're going to meet there. How mm -hmm. we're going to travel. Where the food's going to be. What we're going to do here. What we're going to do there. You know, game time, the whole nine yards. Everything was just lined out, plop, 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 plop. And, man, it really, it went to schedule. The only thing mm -hmm. that didn't go to schedule was the bus driver who was, I mean, she was flying, man. She, <laughs> Miss Rosa, 
Miss Miss Rosa had the spaceship going. Okay. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, she had, she was good, and uh, and, and so you know everything was very professional. I was very impressed uh, by the by the step up from where you uh, you normally are le- are used to club level here, right? Mm-hmm. That amateur hobbyist level we're, we're used to. Mm-hmm. Where everybody jumps in, you know, buddy's cars, and there's four, there's four guys in a car, five guys in a car. We're gonna go travel over to, you know, two of them hung over. Yeah, yeah, two, three hours over to wherever we're going, and and you know we're gonna, car, you know, caravan over there, right? Mm-hmm. No, this was, uh, this was, you know, most of the players were in the bus. There mm-hmm. were some players that traveled over there because they had family over in Austin already, right? So, you know, that was that was arranged with the coaches ahead of time because they were going to tra- stay over with family in Austin over the weekend. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that stuff was arranged ahead of time. But, you know, everybody traveled, most everybody traveled on the bus. Mm-hmm. And everything was arranged just like that. When we got there, bus pulled in, got off the bus. It, it was, it was you know, Baylor, Baylor uh, Medical pulled up in their, in their SUV, you know, everybody unloaded Baylor Medical, went over there, set up the pop-up tent. Baylor Medical started wrapping everybody up, wrapped up the other team too. You know, it was it was uh it was very impressive. Excellent. It, it was just a great environment. I mean, it, 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 you know, all these players who played together before, they've known each other. You know, on both sides of the fence, they they just you know, both the Blacks and the Sabercats, these guys are just you know they're. They're intermingling a little bit. Yeah, they know each other. Hey, guys, how you doing? How you doing? There's, you know, two or three guys in the Sabercats who played for the Blacks before, so they know each other here or there. So all these guys are getting along, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a good environment is what I saw. It wasn't just a – it wasn't – it was professional and a good environment. So on the cat side of that, I I was really impressed. But Excellent. you know, talking about some of the other stuff we've seen, you look at the uh, you look at the announcements for the, the signings. Uh, I got a question today about hey, oh no, yesterday. So when I was at after the match, I was talking to Gareth Jones at uh, at the uh, Austin Blacks clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Gareth is an old Austin Black. He's an Englishman, and uh, he's a, he's a, He's a, Gareth is a real gentleman. You'll see him posted on Facebook a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Gareth was asking me, he goes, well, what about the gold? I mean, are they going to be worth anything? And I, and, I, and I told Gareth what I tell everybody. You never count out a Nathan Osborne coach team. You know, Nathan coached the Metropolis gold, the Metropolis yep. team, right? Mm-hmm. And he, you look at that team that he had together up there. That was a tough team. I've watched those guys play plenty of times before. And great that pack is, of forwards, oh, fantastic. Oh man, great pack, and, and, and an electric backline. Yep, always an electric backline. So I don't think you can ever put aside and, and just you cannot discount what you're going to come up against with the Nate Osborne team. So that's you know that's one thing I think uh, a lot of teams in the MLR they may go up against the goal thinking. Uh, they put everything together at the last minute. You know, we can put that. In. Nah, man, that's not a team, dude. They've got some big dudes in that in that motor room. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. that is uh, Derek Van Klein, Zarnitsky. You know, some of those guys they've got in the second row, and they've got uh, Nicola. Nicola uh, uh, what's his name? What's the uh, Oh my goodness! I can't believe I can't remember everybody's name that's back there. The two Chileans that they've got in the back row, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, they've got some real motors on that team. Brennan Falcon's going to be a shoe in on that team. If you've not seen that kid play, man, he no, has. Oh, dude, he's got a real motor on him, and he's a hard, hard kid. Cam Falcon at, at flank at at, uh, at hooker, you know that 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 uh, scrum just at the goal is going to be a very mobile but a very big scrum mm-hmm. just, just Alex Sajowski yeah yeah Sajowski. big boy oh Sajowski man big man that's what I was talking about that is a big 
animal of a man. Yeah, I mean, is. how did they find a T-shirt that fit that? <laughs> he's a big. I mean, he's putting. He was putting up four hundred plus. You I know, know. He can, I he's, know. He's, he's a he's a, he's a, he's a strong boy, right? dude. He's you a big know. Old boy. So so you know you're going up against a team like that. You know you got to be you got to be worried about. Hey, you know what am I going to do? Scrum come come scrum time. What am I going to do come line out time? Because these guys are going to go up against you, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to go up against you. So it, it's 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 going to be – you can't just discount them. This is a team that's going to actually be out there competing against you. And then these – so you think about what are they – they really haven't even started announcing their wings yet. And mm-hmm. if you look at what LSU has had at the wing in the last couple of years, they've been bringing in some of these kids that have been playing rugby mm-hmm. – for four or five years in the L- in the New Orleans rugby system, right? Mm-hmm. But they've also been playing football coming up in New Orleans, and they're playing running back at LSU, plus playing rugby at wing at LSU. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So, ta- and, so talent, and, talent. So, yeah, they're talent, talent. Okay, these guys, I mean, and they've got both sides. I mean, they, they know how to play both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. One of them's, I mean, so I've watched both of these guys play, two of these guys I'm talking about. One of them's a running back, one of them's a safety. Mm-hmm. And these guys can play. And if they make that goal team, mm, Be something else, won't it? Uh, and then Cam- Cameron Troxler, this guy is, uh, he, he, so he is a pure distributor. Just okay. pure distributor. Now, he can actually step through the gap, too. And that's where he's really gold at is getting through the gap and then distributing the ball oh, wow. out to out to out to somebody looping on him or to our speed coming through right. Mm-hmm. This and the guy is just really gold at that. So all of this stuff that's happening there in, in, in New Orleans, they got everybody. You know, I had some people ask me, well, "What do they have the talent out there? Do they have the talent? Man, yeah. come on, man! They got Ty Elkins over in Charlotte." Yeah, shout they out to even, Ty. They, they ain't even count out. They ain't even called on Ty yet. They've mm-hmm. got all kinds of wings down through the south there. They can call on. There's Absolutely. there's plenty of speed on the outside, right? Mm-hmm. There's plenty of centers through the out th- that they can call on. Mm-hmm. You know at, what? What I'm concerned about with the gold is what they're going to do at the hinge, because okay. that's really that's really going to be important. I think they've got the I think they've got the uh, the, the the scrum. And the midfield and the wing figured out. I think their hinge is what they've got to get right. Okay. If they get the hinge right, then the rest of it, I think the rest of it's in line. Um, okay. Austin, I'm not really worried about Austin. Those guys are getting, they're going to put it together. The biggest thing is going to happen to happen, have to happen in Austin is connection. Right. Connection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. We talk about that all the time. Uh, San Diego, they're going to start announcing here real soon. You're going to start hearing a lot of stuff out of San Diego here. Real exciting, soon. exciting. Um, it's going to you're going to start hearing coaching and uh, and backroom and, and uh, back end stuff first before you start hearing players. But from what I understand, uh, a lot of player stuff is already in place. A lot of and all the coaching stuff is already in place. Good. So a lot of that stuff's going to start coming out. You're going to start hearing about that. So. Don't worry about San Diego Legion. That's already coming out. Glendale, most all that's already in place. You just haven't heard about it because that's Diana's keeping that close to the vest, and she's going to release all that when it's necessary. Excellent. So, so, and, and they just they have their timetable they're working on, and when that's when that timetable's ready, and she's going to release it. It's based on whatever she, you know, whatever Diana Anderson says. This is the time to do it. So. She is our marketing guru, and that lady is smart as she can be when it comes to marketing. Awesome. So, so. Well, and that's something, and you know what? That's some, there's something to be said that we don't talk about enough in sport, in, in this area of sport in general, and that's front office talent. Um, oh, yeah. it's, some, it's something you hear about in the NFL, the NBA, GMs, smart player, um, you know, player association representatives, all the way up through the organization, right? Whether it's your director of sports medicine, I mean, we're not at that level yet, but like, all of those positions, there's a lot of talent management that goes in with that. We always think it's just players, but how are these players getting ready? How are, how are these coaches' be, selections being filled? How are vacancies being filled? How are logistics being handled? These are all talent-driven things. Like one of the most talented managers in USA Rugby, Sarah Saul. Uh, it's like we think about people like that who have 
that are the engine that make these like player, these athletic organizations go. Um, we can't lose sight of that. And that'd be interesting to hear more commentary about where people, I'm glad you mentioned that these people so, getting, so let me, let me give you an example of that. So like at the Sabercats, Trey Preston is their, their video analyst analyst, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But he also handles all of their logistics on a, on a travel weekend. Mm-hmm. And he's very, very good at it. He's, I mean, you can just watch him. He's got all the details down. He explains everything. Boom, 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 boom. This is how it's going to go. This is what you need to do here. This is your buddy system. And here we go. Nice. I mean, he, he he's, he's ready to go. But when the match goes down, he's not involved in the match except to do the video. He covers the video. Match manager is Phil Beck, former Wasp Wing, London Wasp Wing. Mm-hmm. who understands how to manage a match. Mm-hmm. So his job is to make sure that the fourth official is paying attention to the yellow card time. Mm-hmm. You know, make sure that, you know, talk to that fourth official while the coach is watching the game and doesn't have to, you know, doesn't have to manage the fourth official or anything else that's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, he his job is to make sure that the, uh, that the, uh, the AT is checking out somebody on the field. You know, instead of instead of you know, with their head off over somewhere else. Which mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, Megan's head is never off over somewhere else. She's always paying attention to her to her cat. So so mm-hmm. she 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 makes sure she herds them really well. Gotcha. But uh, you know, it, it's 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 just those kind of things. Those details are paid attention to, and it's extreme. And what and I had an interesting vantage point this weekend because I was up on the uh, scaffolding up, and this comes to my next point. So one of the things I did this weekend, so this was a scrimmage, right? That that they played this weekend against Austin Blacks. Mm -hmm. And they allowed me to do a live podcast, a live play-by-play podcast Mm -hmm. of the scrimmage. I got up on the scaffolding on the sidelines for the uh, at at the at Burfield in Austin Mm -hmm. and did my podcast, uh, play-by-play podcast commentary up there. And so I kind of got an overview of everything that was happening as it was happening and did that on MixLR. I have a, uh, a podcast station there, MixLR.com slash Grant-A-Cole. And uh, if next week, as uh, the, they're going to play the Dallas Reds, not in a scrimmage, but actually in a full match and up in Dallas, and I'll be doing the play-by-play again there as well. So if you guys want to listen to it, it Tosan, if you want to listen to the match, since it's not a uh, a match in a stadium, they don't want to present that as a SaberCats match because it's not Very in smart. a stadium. Okay? Very smart. It's it's in a park. It's in the Reds Park, you know, Lake Holland Park. But they it's don't scrimmage. mind. Yeah, it's a scrimmage. They don't yeah. mind, but they don't mind me doing my thing as a play by play podcast. And one of the things I really enjoyed this weekend is uh, some of the players, their their parents were overseas or from overseas, and they were listening in, and they really enjoyed the podcast. I really appreciated the feedback I got back from them this weekend about awesome. the stuff I the stuff I did because I'm, I'm able to then tweak that a little bit. So sure. Well, one thing, and also one thing that we've talked about is one of the most important things for the game to continue to develop is. We have to watch the sport in a professional way. That's commentary, right? How much yes. do we learn from watching good commentary? Oh, yes. Um, and we're, listening we're, to it. Right. Listening to it. So people that see the entire pitch talk about why things happened. I, it's always funny when you look in comment sections. You can kind of tell who under, understands what's going on and who doesn't. Um, they'll blame the wrong people for the wrong things. So they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll point out the wrong, like, you know, they're worried about the wrong stuff. This person's terrible. Actually, they had the best. Um, series out of anyone in their position. They just didn't understand because they weren't looking at them in the situations in the role they were supposed to be in. Um, stuff like that. So it's it's very important that we have access to those type of, that level of professionalism um, in the game, even when it's not quite um, the, brand, you know, the brand product that we want to put out, like when, when we're in a stadium, that type of thing. I would love to see, I would love to see if eventually we get um, MLR working up here on, over on the East Coast um, even here in Maryland, there are some venues like that that we can put up. There's the soccer plex, things like that, that um, are enough, uh, good enough to sell enough tickets that you'll make some money. It's a nice, you know, putting green grass, and they've hosted rugby before. Um, 
so there are things that can happen if they if people are so interested, so to speak. <coughs> um, <laughs> what are you trying to say? Yeah, right. You know, um, but there are a lot of competing competing interests that you know. That's another show altogether. Um, but I do like where this is going. So I guess the next question for me, um, uh, for you with MLR, is what you're seeing in terms of with these matches. Is there a bit of scouting going on? So are we looking at how uh, who these other teams? Like, you know, the Reds and these um, scrimmage opponents. If some guys are showing well in those other clubs, are they being kind of peaked at? So I, I know that the Austin Elite coaches and, and structures are out watching the match yesterday. Mm-hmm. And there were some Austin Elite, uh, Elite players that weren't Austin Black players playing in the match. Mm-hmm. They were getting looked at. Uh, so that, that was happening. I don't know exactly... Uh, all of what was going on there. Now, this is for another podcast because we're well over our time right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we need to talk about the academy system because oh that, yes, yes, that, yes, that, yes. That, that's really what that's really what the what you're asking about when it comes to scouting because right. uh, uh, that's that's really where where that discussion is going to head. So. So before we, uh, I'm, I'm going to derail you right there on purpose because we are sure. over time. We're hard. But uh, uh, bef- <laughs> before, let's take five minutes to discuss uh, our favorite players on the on the USA Eagle Seven side from Cape Town Sevens. Okay, and actually, let's throw and let's throw in Dubai as well. Okay. All right. So right now, I, I'll say right off the top, my favorite right now is Carlin Isles. And Carl and Alice, I'll go with you because I, what, one of the things that I saw, and I know you saw the same thing, was he was stronger Yes. this week and last week than he's ever been in any tournament before. And yes. by stronger, I don't mean stronger mentally, but he I was. I mean, like, he, 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 was, he, he, was, he put on some, he put on some. He did put on yeah. some. It, it wasn't so much that he put on muscle. He is physically stronger in the contact area exactly when he when he went around on uh, on australia when he went around the weak side there about seven meters out from the goal line went around the went around the weak side and took on their defender fended him off fender still on him and kept and, and he got lower he drops his hips down keeps driving his legs but keeps that defender off of him and drives through that was something he couldn't. Well, and and I always kind of pointed this out that I mean anybody who's running his type of times and his level of time are not physically weak people. No, they're um, not. Like you'll see. Um, I mean, um, there are guys that are um, you know, the hundred meter runners, two hundred meters running. They're all benching well over four hundred pounds, even though they're one ninety, two oh five, that type of thing. But we're not used to see. They're not very adaptive in contact. So they don't but know it's, how yeah, to it's do it. You know? It's about how do you use your body. Exactly. Where do you position your balance. body when you get into that kind of, Yeah, his balance is, is changed yep. in contact. His balance has always been great in the open field. Mm-hmm. It's getting into contact to where it's changed at because he's learned to drop his hips in contact. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's I think is going to bring a whole other dimension to his game because if he can learn to do that over and over again – and I think he has. I think we're going to see him come breaking tackles a lot more than normal. Yes. <clears throat> and and once he starts doing that a lot more than normal and breaking those tackles, we're going to see a lot more tries out of it. A, I, a higher percentage of tries out of contact. Right. Out, pr- tries out of contact, but also balls that are recycled because he because he, he drew so much attention <laughs> that we we end up with five on threes and five on twos in a lot of other situations. Um, I think for for Dubai, um, for me, my fav- my favorite player of the of the weekend in Dubai was Alef Kelter, and I mean she made the dream team and rightfully so. I mean this woman has become the creator, and I, you know the thing in, in with Alev in Dubai is uh, there were so many other speedsters on the field that people were overlooking Alev. Yeah. And the defenders were, and all of a sudden she'd strike and just work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, and that, but that's what she needs to do, and she has that's that's her that's that's her, her entire role. Make them respect the middle. If yeah. they don't respect, yeah. them, punish them every yeah. time. You know, and the amount of space that 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 created over and over again. 
let's not forget the you know the tribe. Um, Kelsey Stocker, shout out to her. Shout out to okay. Lily. You know, I mean, one of the that's a classic try in like USA rugby lore and history. Um, I, but I'll t- I'll tell you I still, what, I still say Kelsey deadlifts more than Nick. So <laughs> <laughs> them fighting words, Nick. What, what you gonna do? <laughs> you know, um, but. The thing that really worked for that try, though, and this is what really impressed me about the women in Dubai the most, is our breakdown work. Oh, so, yeah. did you see? I mean, so Kelsey's whole try came out of Nia Tapper just blowing McAllister off the. Tri- I mean, it was McCall- she yeah. put her on the ground, and I mean, it created all the space that was necessary. And Kelsey looked up; she ain't ever seen so much space. She was gone. <laughs> she was- yeah, <laughs> she's off like a shot. I'm telling you, she said, I can finish this. Boom, gone, you know. Um, And one thing, and this is about the team as a whole that I really liked, is that there's a lot more balance that we can play different games. This is something I haven't seen from our from our um, from our women's side in ever Um, in the sense that we have we have some hammers up front. Um, Abby Gostitis and Jordan Gray kept their hands free. The phases that led up to Kelsey's try came from um, Jordan run. Um, Abby run, both retained ball, sucked in two defenders, hands were free. Actually, Abby was going to let it go, but then kept it. And then we had that breakdown. Fantastic. Okay. So now what's going to happen is how well they can create space that, you know, our speedsters like Naya and Kiki and, um, and, and the rest of the crew can, can anticipate. And what is this side going to look like when we start re- rolling back some, through some other folks like Cheddar Emba and things like that? We have some very the, we're showing we're starting to sh- see some depth. Chris, we, haven't like Chris, even, we haven't even seen uh, Nini Persinger come in here, who was the right. leading try scorer at Club Sevens. Right. I mean, so these, she was just blowing by everybody at Club Sevens, and she's not even in the mix yet. Right. See, so these are things that if, there's a lot to get excited about. Unfortunately, we don't have the communication stuff in place that's going to get people understanding what to be excited about. But that player pool looks quite good. Oh, yeah. um, and it's developing and it's growing. It's getting deeper. It's getting a bit younger, which is very, mm-hmm. very important going forward. Um, blooding, new, blooding new folks that are very competent. And we have plenty of experience, like the Ryan Carlisles, et cetera, who are help guiding and and writing, help, keeping the, the reins so of things, you know, telling these folks what they need to do um, to get these things done. Um, the, other, the other portion is, you know, when some people get healthy, this is going to be really interesting. Very oh, yeah. competitive. It's a damn shame that there's not more. There's not more stops on the on the circuit for the women right now. Um, yeah. th- there'd be a lot to see, but you know this is what we've got to deal with. But um, I, one thing I did like about the bounce back, and I'm, I'm not giving anybody any credit on the men's side for, for Dubai <laughs> the first one. That was NASA, <laughs> you know. But I like the bounce back. Yeah, um, well, and they did they did bounce back. Uh, the one thing that I think we need to learn how to put in place, and, and it's obvious that we don't have that, is we, we, we don't have anything resembling a failure or success recovery system. Shout out to Maddie Gray. Yeah, Maddie, Madison Gray, yes. We're talking about we're talking about Madison. Yep. So, uh, and... Uh, Which, by the we, way, if you guys go to ViralRugby.com, I promise, I told her I was going to do this a while ago, but I'm going to put a couple links to her work on Vile Rugby so you guys can see it. Like This is great for anybody professionally, anybody who does any strategy work, runs organizations, teams, or just for your own personal development. Um, everything from motivation to acknowledgement to concepts that we talk about in org, org development and management. Yeah. I'm telling you, she, brilliant, brilliant mind. Brilliant mind, yeah. brilliant work. It's, it'll make you think about things that you're doing. Yeah, and uh, it's really important. So, uh, so we're near the end of our cast. Yep, yep. And we've got things that we've uh, we've got things that we've got to uh, uh, we've got things that we've got got to talk about next time. We've yep. talked about tonight. We've got to talk about next time. So uh, we'd love to hear from y'all. Mm-hmm. If you guys got things you want us to talk about here, email me grant.cole at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Email to Hassan, message us somehow on Facebook. Yep. Hey, I don't care how I get the call from you. Just let us know, okay? E- exactly. And that's the thing. Comment sections are fine. Facebook messages are fine. Twitter is fine. This is about visibility. Watch, we talked about social media earlier. 
Mm-hmm. Un- if, social media is about visibility. The more we're talking about rugby, the more people that sponsor things are going to want to deal with rugby. The more that we have a positive, brandable presence, yep. that means more money. So when we talked about social media, this is um, part of that process, digital media in general. Um, yep. So reach out to us. And that's also um, speci- also with me. Um, reach out to me at um, viralrugby.com, TTT, my three, my three initials. At viralrugby.com. Um, if you if you have any if you need any service in terms of how to manage your social media, digital media presence, that type of thing, I offer those services in addition to making videos. Um, also, I know the I know the business and I also know the tools and I also know how to make make a profit. So you know that, that MBA and Masters of Finance works for something. <laughs> 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 Let's hope. Yeah. All right. All right, so folks, hey, um, thanks for tuning in. I hope we, I hope we, um, I hope we were entertaining, but also informational to you. Anything you want to cover, hit us up. Um, it's Tosan, the prop culture icon, your prop culture icon, on whether you know it or not. <laughs> and signing off with Grant Cole, the rugby evangelist from This Is Texas Rugby. All right, I will see you out in cyberspace. Until then, All go right. Eagles. Go Eagles. See you in the rucks.